Hey everybody, Matt Lego here, back again um, doing another tech video. In this video, I'll be um, trying to help anyone who still has a legacy system running uh, Windows XP or even Vista um, to find software that might work for them uh, now that everything no longer supports and things are starting, the remaining items are starting to pull their support for um, Windows XP. So, first off, what I want you to do is to take updates from Microsoft. If you don't have Internet Explorer 8, you're going to need to take that update um, for security reasons also. Um, start up Internet Explorer. I already have it installed here. I'm just showing you guys how to do it. Start Internet Explorer. It'll bring you to MSN, of course. And then type in, so if you're not running in a VM, or if your system has very low resources, I'll show you another browser, or the same browser but an older version of it, um, which it's going to tell you this, which you can just say whenever, no, don't turn on, use express settings, it doesn't matter right now, which it changed my default browser, which I'm going to have to change back, and I'll show you how to do that here in a bit. You should also take Service Pack 3 before, you should do all your updates before uh, attempting any of this, so Firefox, it'll come up right away. Firefox, which it'll get mad at me here <laughs> because Microsoft now blocks these sites. So just do it www.google.com and it'll take you to Google. Then you can look up Firefox. Click on download Firefox and then free download and it will download the file. And then you can go through the installation. It just it'll it'll be a very simple installation. Uh, I can guide you through it. I will actually show you the installation of it here. Uh, which then it's going to do that, and it will download the file. Which, yeah, then you can either run or save it. Which for us we're just going to do run. Now since I'm running in a virtual machine. Uh, this will not work for me. I can't actually get past the installation without it causing problems. Microsoft error reporting. Yes, I'm expected errors. I just don't send them. Because I'm in a VM, I know exactly what I'm doing. Bring it up a second time because I clicked it twice. Then it'll extract here. And then next, standard. If you're just doing this, just click standard and it will install. So you can see, and yep, use Firefox and then upgrade because I have an older version that will not succeed for me. So it'll just say download, then just let it download, and then just click finish, and then you'll have Firefox. So, so I'm gonna quit it. If you are in a VM or you have uh, a very old system, not like if you have a very old system, like if you have 64 meg RAM, I'd recommend just trashing or not trashing the computer, but putting it away um, and not using it with the internet if you have that old of a machine. Uh, search up old version. Go to the site. And go down to. This is also a good site for getting older versions of software that are compatible with XP. And go to Firefox. Operation aborted. Wants to block me from going to it. Yeah, Windows cannot. Should work for you. I know this isn't the greatest, but I'm, I will show you it uh, in Firefox here. It should work for you. Um, I have problems with the internet in this, um, but just go to Firefox and it'll have a list of versions and download Firefox 12 here. And that's what I have on here. That's the newest version. It let me go to. I'm not sure what went wrong here. It worked on my old machine, but not this one. So then it'll come up with this. I have DuckDuckGo as my thing on here. Uh, which it doesn't matter, you can use Google. Now we're going to look up um, Open Office as an alternative to Microsoft Office. Of course, Microsoft Office will still work with XP. Uh, older versions such as uh, Office XP here, this will still work perfectly fine with XP, uh, everything up to 2010. But if you want something that is still supported and everything, you can uh, do Open Office, and of course, it's Apache Open Office here. 
course it was Sun Microsystems for a while, and that's a pretty old thing. No, no, don't, don't go to CNET. Don't go to CNET. I accidentally clicked on that. Do not do that one. You have to go to OpenOffice.org. Do not download from anywhere else. I want to download Windows. It's also available for Linux, which is cool, and for OS X. Then you can choose your language here, which I'm. And then you can also, it will also let you download older releases for that. Then download it. Which will take you to this external site, it's fine. And just save it. Now it is at 130 megs, so if you have a slower internet connection, it will take a while. see I tried to download that there. At this point you can just close this out. Or not close the whole browser, you want to keep it open until it downloads. But, yeah. um, also I'm going to do a video here within the next few days, probably in the, within the next few days, talking about how to upgrade your RAM in case your computer is slow. Uh, then upgrading your RAM will be a quick way to do that and I'll help you guys do that. Here. Whether you have a laptop or a desktop um, so that'll be done, and you can just double click it, run it. I can close this out. Welcome to OpenOffice. Uh, next, you can change your directory here. Uh, it's just going to do that, so install, and then you can click uh, Show Details, and then it'll show you what it's doing. And, and it will, it's just, a, it just extracted the file so we can actually download it right away. Then it might have to download these additional uh, things here. Visual C++ 2008, uh, because this is a, I refresh this operating, or this uh, VM, I, I think I said that in the last one, that I refresh this thing. Then next, you can do whatever you want here. I'd recommend it for all users, but you can change it. You can do custom or typical. I'm gonna show you custom. Typical will just take it through. You can just choose what you want on here. And I'll actually do typical because I don't want to mess with it right now. Then create a start link. The desktop, then it will install. Hopefully it doesn't take a long time to install. Um yeah. So also real quick I will just mention a software, a piece of software iTunes. Um, iTunes is a bit finicky. Um, you can just take version 11. Uh, that's what I did. Just take version 11 and it should work fine. You can find that on, on old version as well. I would take version 11. I'm not sure how high it goes, but I'd take version 11 and try to update it as high as it'll let you go. I'm not sure if they still support XP, but if they, if you, if they don't, then just go for version 11 and then update it to whatever their newest version is. I won't show that in here because it takes a long time to install iTunes. I should know that. I've done it three times in the past two nights. <laughs> so, yeah, because the problem was that I have an iPod Classic 160 gig, and it was telling me I need. Uh, I had iTunes 8. I downloaded iTunes 10 because I was like I knew it wouldn't be compatible because iTunes 8 was before that thing. That tells me I need iTunes 7. Or 10.7, which actually came out after that manu was manufactured, so no clue. But yeah, finish. Then you can hit click on Open Office here to get to your programs. It'll have to do a setting, then welcome to. And then you can just next. Then just enter your things with mine. Yes. Then group, whatever your name is, and just PR. Finish. That's all the information you need to give. So just your name and your initials for obvious reasons, because of course, like for all the different stuff. And here are your different. It's just like in the. It can also open um, a Microsoft Office document here, text document, which is exactly like, not exactly like, but very similar to Word here. As we can see, it is a lot like Word. I'm trying to get used to this. Thing. 
Uh, you can change your font, you can change your spacing, you can change your point size or font size rather. Um, you can close that out if you want to. Yeah, I got all your stuff up here. You got it will spell check for you. Uh, spelling and grammar, so if I do so if I type in random shit here. There's my swear for the video. Um, <laughs> spelling and grammar. Then it will ask me to change stuff just like in Word. Uh, so close that out. Discard it. And actually, hold on. Let me show you this again. Back in the text document. Yeah. And you can do open. As you can see, uh, Microsoft Word 2003 XML. DocX right there. Doc. And those are all the files you need in Microsoft Excel, so it will open all those files just to show you that. I don't have Office on here, obviously. Only thing that's really missing is an email thing, but you will, you'd want to use online email anyway. Spreadsheet, which is basically like Microsoft Excel here. Oh, they call it Calc, but yeah, it's the same thing you can just do. Uh, sun, and you can just do 12% or I guess whatever want to do. It's a spreadsheeting thing like you'd use to do your taxes or just to uh, make a graph or whatever you want to do with it, like here, a graph. See that? And it'll do whatever. So, yeah. Just like Excel. And once again, of course, you can open uh, the files. It's a good alternative, especially if you have Linux. Presentation, which is just like PowerPoint. So we can see empty presentation, just do this and then oh, blue border. It wants to lock up on me. We gotta create. And yeah, as we can see it looks very similar. Click add title, it's, it looks very similar to words uh, or, or PowerPoint. PowerPoint clone. There you go. Um and then this is the newest version, and it, support X, it supports XP. So, uh, these people are dedicated to supporting as many people and as many systems as they can. Because they know that many people still run XP for varying reasons, whether it be software at work or what. But then there's Draw here, which is for vector-based objects, as far as I'm aware. I do believe it's for vector-based drawing. I could be wrong with that. Database is a database and formula is a formula. And then you can open, of course, documents there. So that's a good office suite for the thing. Uh, I do believe you can also create shortcuts, yeah, like right there. And you can copy those, like if you want a uh, writer here, you could just copy that and paste it right here. Then you'll open up writer. Just like, um, just like opening up um, Word. Bring that down there, and then now I will show you guys um, antivirus suggestions. Microsoft Security Essentials is no longer no longer supports uh, XP, so don't try that. Uh, you can download an older version of it, but you don't want to download an older version of a of an antivirus software because it can actually lead to viruses if anything. Can prevent some, but it can also lead to viruses. So my recommendations are AVG. Of course, I'm not going to install any because, of course, I'm in a VM in VirtualBox, which they don't like antiviruses. And you can just go there. And I'll show you this a little bit here. And free download. Then save the file. Then run it. And it will basically just guide you through the install on its own. So, yeah. uh, open can. <laughs> okay. Um, wants to keep coming. I'm gonna have to delete the file. Hold on. <laughs> let me go for that. I mean, let me clear this out entirely. I don't need any of it. All right. And you can just close this out. And this you don't need anymore, you can just get rid of this folder. You can also keep it if you want to reinstall it or anything. Because of course there's no licensing required, nothing for that.
fired. Also, another good antivirus is Avast. It's basically the same thing. Or a VR for you. Those will work well. Do not use Norton antivirus. It's not good for your system. Uh, and real quick, just to remind you about antivirus. If you have one already, if you're on an older system and you have one already, come into your control panel here. Do add or remove programs. And then in this list you'll see a antivirus and then just do remove and it should guide you through it. And here's to back to setting a browser default because I've changed mine to Internet Explorer. Come here. You can also just um, click this thing and you can get to it. Do custom and you can just choose whatever you want to do. So I hope this video was helpful on um, helping to update a uh, XP machine for more everyday use for internet use and for uh, use in an office type environment by using a suite very similar to Microsoft Office even though of course you can still use versions of 2010 and 2010 is still very modern um, but of course if you want updates, security updates, uh, just things in general, new additions to it um, and support for um, possible uh, new office uh, documents, like if it would go from docx to docxy or something stupid, um, then you would have it there. So uh, I do know that they do make packs for um, opening docx files in 2003 office, but it's no longer supported once again. So Those are just some quick tips there for getting your system up to date and uh, trying to get more modern software on there. Once again, I, my recommendations for XP machines are to keep them off the internet unless you are using the internet. Do not keep them plugged in to the internet unless you are actively using the internet. And do not trust sites that you don't trust, or at least if you try to, if you're going to download software, I would recommend um, either verifying that software that it's good and verifying that your download is good, or uh, trying to use a VM if your system can run a VM. Um, or I would highly recommend at this point updating once again to at least Windows 7. I would recommend 7. Windows 10 of course is not very good uh, for those older systems and there are, there are problems with it. Same with 8. So I'd recommend 7. I would not upgrade to Vista from XP. But So I hope those tips were helpful uh, in getting your systems up to date uh, and have a good day. I can just cut this part off. So I have a thing to it.